So what do you think of this fantastically nice, clean shop? Look at Oh, this is it. The floor, everything. I cleaned it up really pretty good. And it's a good day to be inside because it's like 90 some degrees outside. It's really a cooker. And inside I have the air conditioner running. We have a groundwater air conditioner that dehumidifies the room as well as air conditioning. Really, I like that. Cost me maybe a dollar a day to run it. It's well worth the dollar, well worth it. Anyhow, so we have our stuff all peeled, we have the shop clean, and we're to this thing. Here's our blueprint. <laughs> everything on here, everything here is center to center to center. Now the, we have from the, let's see, from here, on the, on the rail we have from the deck, okay, right here on the deck, going up to the middle of the bottom rail, five inches. And then from the middle of the bottom rail to the middle of the top rail, here we have 30 inches. And then from the middle of the top rail to the top of the post, it's another five. So it's five, 30, five. Okay, so we've got 40 inches there and the half flat portion will take up nine. So a regular post is going to end up to be 49 inches. Regular post. Okay, those are, those are 49. And then we go from middle of post to middle of post. And we cut all the rail lengths already. So they're 55 and a half and 50 and 3 quarters and da 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 on with that. So that's really easy when you go middle to middle to middle. Very good. Hard. It's much harder to make a mistake that way. Okay. But this point right here, this transition point, where we come across the deck and then angle down when it takes that. If there's any place that could make a mistake, it's right here in this transition point. So, because this post ends up being seven inches longer and we got two of those so we got two that are seven inches longer so that's what does that end up being 56 inches let's see there so we go and there's two of those and of the others, of the 49 inch ones, we got one, two, odd one, odd one. So there's two, three, four, five. There's five of those. And there's two of the odd ones. And then there's two, four, six. Six stair posts. So we're going to find the missing numbers. Now this, that's a standard because we'll end up with from the deck coming up for residential code, okay? Residential code. You need to be 36 inches, at least here in Minnesota. 36 inches to the top of the rail and the spaces in between, in between spindle, spindle, those spaces, they're supposed to be four inches or less. Okay, that's for residential code. So we're gonna match up with that, same thing going down the stairway. We're gonna find those numbers and we're gonna find it by, we're gonna take this and we're gonna make a full scale blueprint of this point right here, this. Or that spot, we're going to put that on this cardboard and get a full scale. Because there's so many optical illusions in here, and to goof up the math at this point would be totally funless. There. 
we have our line drawing of middle of post. There's the first step. Seven inches up. That one isn't supposed to be there. Seven inches up. Here's the top of the deck. This one is the middle of the bottom rail, the middle of post. Oh, there's the middle of the handrail, and here's the middle of the handrail going down. And way up there, that's the middle of the top rail. And it doesn't look <laughs> it, 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 th like this. When it's just the line drawing, you don't see any optical illusions. But I tell you what I'm going to do, just for you, I am going to draw in this post, these two rails, those two rails, and you're going to start going, what? It looks wonky. It can't be like that. So that's what's next. I'm going to fill in the blanks, and you'll see where and how we have to make some choices that you don't deal with in conventional handrails. When you're making a regular stairway, you don't deal with it. But here, we have to. Okay, now it started to maybe look just a little bit unique because from the center of the post coming out for like okay for the length of this tenon oh, the post at the base were seven and a seven inches at the top of the post since we spun them since they're so close okay the average off at six and a quarter at the top and seven and a quarter, seven inches at the base. So they change. We don't have to deal with that change so much, not a big deal. Anyhow, from here, from the middle coming out, oh, we got three and a, about three eighths, three and a half, basically. So we can figure, we can get be safe with going, as far as pressing in there and stuff, we can go three inches, three inch long on the tenon there. Okay. So three inches for the tenon length on this one, but for this one, since it's at the angle, to get to the same spot, it's four and three quarters. Okay, now if, like I'm, I'm going to use our, <laughs> I'm going to use our big tenon cutter, the really nice one. Okay, and the TC2200. No, TC300 would work just the same. TC300 works just the same as a big one. You can get cut long tenons and everything and that's just fine. If you're using something else, you can still figure out the lengths. If you can only cut a two and a half inch long tenon, you're gonna have to subtract off some. Here, we can make it, there, four, four and three quarters long. I'm going to make them four and three quarters long because I can. It makes, keeps everything really simple. But if you're working center to center, you can still, from that center point, figure how much shorter to make the handrail if you can only cut a ten and that's two inches long, or two and a half inches. So you can figure it out. So four and three quarters. And uh, three inches. Okay. So you can see the change here. Now we go to other changes because I want to make this all at the shop and then send it out there and let the father son team install it. Okay. I don't want to have to make anything at the job site. I want to make it all here. So the next is to get. To be matching up with code, we go to a four inch space. Okay, how are we going to do? We're going to. <laughs> we need to get it so we can drill the holes and all of this rail 
and it works fine. Center line design works fine every time. Okay, we just need to figure it out and where to start stop from because here yeah, we're going to say that the edge of this post, now if you were going from spindle to spindle to spindle, or in this way you're coming across, you'd have a spindle, a spindle, a spindle, a spindle, and a post. But you want the space between the post and the first spindle to be the same as from in between the first spindle and the second spindle. You want that to be the same. So, how do we do that? Since this is all, okay, we can go and figure, all right, the spindles are, how thick are they? The average two and a, at the middle, two and three quarters. Two, three quarter. spindle diameter, two and three quarters. So if you come over here and say, imagine, imagine that right here is the middle of a spindle, no, the edge of a spindle. <laughs> so we go, all right, half of that is the inch and three eighths. So come over here and go, okay, there's the inch and three eighths over. And then from there, we have a four inch space. And then an inch and three quarters over. And that gives us from center to center, from center to center, we can go, oh, like here. Four plus two and three quarters, so it's six and three quarters. Center to center would be an ideal number, but then at the angle, what is it? So we can go, we go, here is the middle, six and three quarters over, all right, the middle, and then from the middle of the post, that's nine inches. So we come down here, nine inches over, and that would be the middle of our first spindle. But here coming this way <laughs> to the end of the rail, okay, on this full size pattern here, and instead of being nine inches over, it's, what is it? 10, 10 and three quarters. Oh my. <laughs> we'll show you how to figure it out when we get over to the drill press to drill the holes, but this same number that would be, oh, seven inches here, but at the angle, it's, you know, where are we going to go? Seven, there's, oh, pardon me, it's not seven, six and three quarters. Six and three quarters, and we'll come down here, and nine. At the angle, we're going to be about eight inches, eight inches center to center on the spindles to make all this work. And the battery just ran out on that unit. Oh no, what are we going to do? Stop for the moment. Okay, optical illusions. Here to here, same distance. As from this point to that point, that's the same. But now once this has the tendon cut on it and the curve comes up here, look, and it's only, uh, only about an inch, inch and a quarter from that, from that point of the cut there to the tenon, all right? But when you get up here, it's, oh, oh look at that. It's, it's like from there, and it's maybe four inches, where here it's only an inch, okay. That's where the optical illusions come in, and it goes, it just doesn't look right. But when you go from middle to middle, 
from the exact center, then come up the exact center, and then up the exact center. This from here to here is exactly the same as from here to here, even though it looks really different. Now, each of our rail sections on the stairway is 50 and 3 quarters, and we want to maintain a space like, oh, we've got maybe 8 inches here to work with, right? From center to center to end up with 4 inches. But we've got to get things even all the way along. So if we take and go, all right, the depth of, hmm, here would be the imaginary line right here of the center. If there was a spindle right here, from here to here, because we had six and three quarters from the middle to the middle to the middle, six and three quarters. So when you come back here to this point, that from this point coming back, oh, here's almost three inches of three inches of tenon back here that we're going to have to subtract. So if we take the number of our handrail at 50 and 3 quarters and take 3 off of each end so we can get equal spacing between them. We take a 3 off of each end and go, okay, it isn't 50 anymore. If we go 50 and 3 quarters minus 6, then it would be, oh, let's say 45. So here in our chart of spacing, 7 and 5 eighths from center to center or Okay, all of these different from center to center. Where do we come up with? Where's 40? Oh, well, there's 45. If we went a spacing of, if we back up one page here. We go, oh, oh look at that. Here, 45, seven and a half inches from center to center. And we come up with 45. That's the distance that we want to work with. So when we go to put this in the drill, okay, look, this, we would take this tenon, we're going to take this tenon, slide it in there so that, now this is an inch and three quarters there. So we're going to lick it, let it stick out the other side here about an inch, inch and a quarter so that in between from this block to the next block we have our 45 inches from inside the block to inside the block. Now we'll pick that up again once we get to drilling holes but this is our measuring point from inside the block to inside the block which corresponds with this point right here, this one this point from this one to the match on the other end. So we're going to finish drawing our blueprint because we're going to refer back to this. But this is where we beat the, uh, the um, optical illusion. The optical illusions are beat with this right here when we take it over to the tilting column drill press of which we've showed you how to just make a tilting column door press. So you can copy that, that's easy. All right, back to drawing pictures. Here we are at the most chal the most challenging part of the entire the entire project and that is trying to communicate all of this to you without no without making it as clear as mud if I can if I can explain this so it makes some practical application sense to you then I have succeeded in my, in, my, in my adventure. So, here we have, right here, this is our stairway pattern, 33 and a half degrees. When you move over six and a quarter inches, 
The actual angle on the stairway travel is seven and a half. So to make all the numbers work, we're going to start. We're going to start with the easy one first, just straight horizontal rail, where we have the thickness of a spindle versus the thickness of the post. Now we're working with center line design from the center of one post to the center of the next post. It makes it really easy to measure if you go from center to center to center on the posts. That makes it possible to make it back here at the shop. The one transition point is from the center of the post to the center of the first spindle. Because the post is fatter, <laughs> chubbier, thicker than the spindle. Spindles about two and a half average. Post, average in the middle, seven inches. So we go from a seven inch something to a two and a half inch something. And we go, well, we got to make up for that. We go, here, we'll back up just a little bit. Center on this section of rail, center of one post to the center of the next post on this section is 55 and a half inches. So if we take, and where we have here, to have the same space and the same space between the spindle and between the spindle and the post to match up with code, we need to be four inches or less to match up with residential code. So we go, okay, here's same, here's same, and we want all the spacing here to be same. That That's easy, it's this little spot here. So the difference between is about the same as this block. This block is an inch and three quarters thick. So if we figure an inch and three quarters here, that leaves us with an inch and a quarter. Oh, which is the same as this, the inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. So when we go and set up at the drill press, we can just take this, if the rail is, I have, I've got a little shorty up here for the example, but when we put it up here with the rail that is 55 and a half inches long, then when we measure in between it, if we subtract this or this, which is the same, this and this, inch and three quarters, inch and three quarters, inch and three quarters, so we take three and a half inches off and we end up with, oh look at that, 52, all right, 52 inches, because that gives us six and a half inches, and where did we find that? Oh, I got to go to my cheat sheet. Here, we'll go back to find certain numbers on here. Here, here we go, see this? And we end up with, what was the number? This one right here, this number, 52, to find that in the row here. Oh, and it's right here at six and a half. So when we measure between the blocks with this, we end up, take inch and three quarter off, inch and three quarter off, three and a half inches total, 52. There's 52, gives us a spacing of six and a half inches. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. So we can take that then and just measure from here, da, 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 oh, pardon, six and a half, 13, 19 and a half, 26, 32 and a half, 39, 45 and a half, and 52. Okay, huh, so that one is easy, and okay, that part, easy. Now, we'll, we get to the one that's a little more complicated the stairway, but we're going to use the same idea. We need to subtract off something that gives us a number that's in between, in between here and the part that matches way down there of our post. And here, since this angle is like this and things get, and things get longer because of this, it isn't an inch and three quarters anymore, it's more than that. 
Okay, if we go over our approximately an inch and three quarters, then that makes this like two and three quarters, a whole inch longer. So, oh, we're going to take this number to find something that works. Our rail sections are 50 and three quarters. And if we take off, oh, to find a number that works, we go back to, and we want to end up with somewhere in the approximately seven and a half inches, as far as the travel, that will give us six and a quarter inches from here to here, because we can go from six and a quarter all the way up to almost seven. So somewhere between six and a quarter and seven to get our spindle spacing working with initially 50 and three quarters and then we're going to subtract something off and we're going to go to this list to find what the something is. We go, we can take that off. What's the closest to what we want to end up with? That is around, we start with a 50 and three quarters minus off between five and six inches. And we come up with the easiest one here is, oh, 45, seven and a half, seven and a half, 15, okay. And what we would then do, see, our thingy right there, okay. What we would then do with our blocks that uh, we would have it where that the, that the end of the tenon would stick through so that it is at two and three quarters. So when we measure up against here, the distance from, from this surface right here, which matches this point right here, it, this surface right here imitates or is a representative of if we had just a regular spindle to the center, which would be this point right here, the surface of our block right here is representative of just the distance in of a normal spindle center, spindle center. That's what this surface, that's what this surface right here is to represent. Everything going forward when it gets over to the drill press this surface right here is representative of the exact center of a spindle. This gets us past the, oh, the post is chubby. <laughs> sure, the, ch the post is chubby. And this is the point where you adjust for whatever, if you've got a 10 inch diameter post or a four inch diameter post, a four inch would be really skinny, but you can calculate it out all at this point. Okay, but this representative of this mark, which equals to the center of a spindle. So we have the number that started off at 50 and three quarters, minus about something, somewhere between five and six. We come up with an easy number, which is 45. So when we go to, at the drill press, we go from, from this center of the first spindle, which is really in the post, we come over and the center right here, because we're going to be dealing with the exact center of the workpiece at the doctor press, which we have the video out there, how to make a doctor press out of just a, make a tilting column drill press from a conventional Drill press, you want something that's got a one and a half horsepower and a four and three quarter spindle travel, if at all possible. If you get those two things, one and three quarter inch, no, one, one and a half horsepower and a four and three quarter inch spindle travel. That's a fairly common, they make them that size. That's quite common to get it, but if you've got that, it will work for all of this stuff. Don't be concerned with the manufacturer. 
usually when they're getting that big, they're all pretty tough. Uh, we use Delta, we use uh, Rigid, we use Reliant, we use, um, what else? Porter Cable, Porter Cable, is that right? Powermatic, Powermatic, that's what I was thinking. Anyhow, lots of different manufacturers, one and a half horsepower, four and three quarter inch spindle travel, and we are going to be working with the exact center of the workpiece. Oh. And this treat sheet, if you have one of these, like this one changes from seven and three eighths. And here's all of the spindle spacing that it would be if it was seven and three eighths and seven and seven sixteenths and seven and a half. Here, I can do this. I can show you a page. And maybe I'll find a way to do that where I can just put the pages someplace. But that really helps. Seven and nine sixteenths to have a sheet. <laughs> In this case, it's a whole bunch of pages because it starts small and goes way up to what? Yeah, here, page 14, eight and nine sixteenths spacing. So, okay, <laughs> please tell me that is clear, that is that you can see through it like sparkly clean glass, not mud. <laughs> okay, we'll continue on with cutting posts to length because we have a bunch of posts to cut to length. We gotta get, what is it? Five at 49 inch for a regular post, two at 50s, two at 56, the stair post that's longer and then stick six stairway posts, and then there's two really long posts. Anyhow, we're going to get continue on with the journey, and it's important to remember to enjoy the journey.